Welcome, welcome to the presentation from Lavazza Beck is Black. We talk about different themes about coffee and coffee presentation and the link from coffee to the bar. Um, first of all, we want to talk a bit about premiumization. Premiumization is the first thing what we try to explain to you. I have the best colleagues on the stage with me, Diana from Gradowski and Bernardo Kingston Bernard, the bartender here. We all will say a bit about these themes. The first thing, premiumization, is a big and a good topic where we can show you what we mean exactly. Diana, what did you think about premiumization? Thank you. Hi, and welcome to our show today. Um, the first ideas that I had when we talked about premium products, especially now coming to Berlin, Berlin nowadays is one of the places we all come to to find new ideas, to find inspiration, to see new products, and that is what came to my mind. That was the first thought. So that's what I want to talk about. Um, as every product, and I guess it's in every even in daily life products, like food, like alcoholic beverages, like clothes, we all find different themes and different trends, especially premium trends. So I don't know how many of you remember still the old filter coffee machines that we, like my parents used when I was a kid. It's completely different to what we're talking about today. So the product itself, how it's produced, where it's sourced, how it's like, really premiumized and how it's presented at the final customer has changed within the last years, especially in the, in the entire area of coffee. So a few years ago, coffee was just black, hot, and in many cases in Germany quite cheap. So if you look at the pictures we see up here, how we are presenting coffee nowadays has nothing to do with this anymore. So we definitely are one step ahead of this and just imagine you have a black cup of coffee in a just in a mug and compare it to one of the glasses you see up here on the stage having a coffee presented in a wine glass for example it just gives you a complete different feeling and it gives you a different level of price sensitivity so this is what came to my mind first Okay, thank you, Diana. Um, this is Diana's or are Diana's thoughts about premiumization in the coffee business, in a bar or in a cafe. And the bar is the next point what we talk about with uh, premiumization. Please, Bernardo, can you tell us um, something about premiumization in a normal cocktail bar or something like this? A so, bit. Hello. First of all, very warm welcome. I'm very proud here to represent Lavazza, also on the stage. So my part is actually to explain, to build a bridge uh, from the classic bartending to uh, the coffee bar. So barista, bartender, barkeeper, or nowadays uh, a word which I don't like is a mixologist, because uh, it's actually it's about enjoying, enjoying food, enjoying beverages, enjoying fashion, enjoying lifestyle. So premiumization is actually, uh, for me, very important because you want to put the focus on, on um, the liquid which you are celebrating, or actually are up to consume. Um, as Diana explained, uh, a few years ago, our parents used to brew their coffee, a regular filter, a coffee is supposed to be strong, black, and hot. Nowadays, we combine coffee with all kinds of spirits, liqueurs, herbal infusions, um, nitrogen, oxygen. So actually, it's about setting trends, and that's the reason what I'm here for, is actually to be open-minded for new trends, but also give a, a part of my character to the, to the coffee. So um, here you can see um, 
as my colleagues already mentioned, we have uh, different um, styles. And nowadays, uh, think about um, a few brands which I think everybody knows, which is the company Apple, which is the company Tesla, which is the company Google. So everybody puts their, their focus on high quality. It's about combining lifestyle, uh, things you enjoy, and things you want to present and put the focus on. So here, um, as you see, I um, brought a few um, very high glassware, old crystal glasses owned uh, by my grandmother. So we have the, the tradition mixed with modern presentation. Uh, we have different infusions, um, kefir lime leaf, which actually has nothing to do the first type with coffee, but we combine to create new um, alcoholic beverages. Uh, we have orchids, uh, here of course the, the classic coffee bean, and this is actually what my idea is about premiumization, to put a lot of love and focus on, on quality and into the liquid. Thank you. Great. Okay, now um, let's go back a bit to coffee. We always talk about coffee and drinks and so. And let's talk especially as these four things, what we, what we see here. We have here four different types of premiumization extraction of coffee or presentation. You, I think you all know what this is. This is a premium French press version. You all, you are, everybody know the, the normal version from Bodum or something like this. The very, in my, in my opinion, is the very ugly presentation for coffee and for French press. And here you have the easiest way to present coffee in a nice way. Exactly here is the same or here is the same. It is a normal filter extraction but it looks great, yeah? it looks good, and it, it is, for your bar, it is a premiumization, that's what we talk about. Yes, and another point is, um, in the past, we've been always talking about black coffee. Then after a while, after the time passed by, we had a lot of influence, also speaking from Lavazza side, from the Italian coffee culture, so it was all about espresso, cappuccino, in Germany also Latte Macchiato and other products. But now, today, and that's why we're talking about black coffee, because black is back. So filter preparation, as you see it here live on stage, it's not Chemex, it's not French press, it's not a dripping tower. It's all different type of storytelling. And everybody always creates new innovations around it. And especially in Berlin now, we can find a lot of them here today. And this is also what is very important to us. Coffee is not just a product you drink early in the morning. Coffee is a product that has so much in it and that can be used in so many different ways. It comes from a good cup of coffee in the morning that wakes you up and it can end as the perfect drink you have when you go out at night. So that's why we want to talk about the next page which is a new level of preparation for coffee. Okay, the next topic is the new way of preparation or a premium way for coffee preparation. Cold drip and cold brew. I think everybody heard about that, yes? Where is the difference between cold drip and cold brew, yes? Cold drip is this one. What we see here, here's a cold drip tower. We see the cold water in the bowl above and the cold water drips through the coffee into the bowls downstairs. Downstairs on the floor or on the ground, I don't know. Um, the thing is, we have a slowly extraction of coffee yeah, with cold water. Uh, that's why in the coffee are not so many bitter things, yes, aromas, yes. Thank you, Diana. Okay, you see my English is not the best, yeah. Later we will see the same in German, I hope, then it is more easy for me, of course, and for you too. Thank you. Um, 
the difference between cold drip and cold brews and the cold brew extraction we have cold water and we put in the coffee and the extraction time is longer than here by the cold drip towel and we have more aromas inside but I think now is the point coming that Bernardo explained it to you because he's a brilliant English speaker okay so I um, hope everybody can hear me now better um, yeah so cold drip for me um, as, a, as a bartender it was also um, a journey actually um, to find a new way to combine a pure coffee aroma the the intense coffee um, with um, classic drinks so last year we tried to last year we tried to actually combine a classic drink which is a uh, gin tonic with coffee so your first impression is going to be that actually you can't combine tonic water and coffee everybody is going to shake their head and say it's not possible it's not going to taste and we um, were looking together with Lavazza um, a way to combine the, the pure coffee essence which we found here in the, the cold brew co um, by the, the cold drip tower and uh, gin tonic. So what I did actually, I took the, the gin tonic and uh, broke it apart. So I used, or we're looking for uh, gin which is very smooth a um, little bit sweetened and also maybe premiumization likes fits to Lavazza and I found this uh, gin with uh, Hendrix I think everybody knows it um, it's a special brand it's a special gin which is um, very unique on the market um, so what I did actually we combined the the spirit with the the cold brew and I added um, liquid uh, sugar cane, um, lime, uh, fresh lime juice, and I, of course I added to underline the, the flavors of the Hendrix gin uh, cucumbers. So the, the cucumber is very important because it gives me uh, a tool to add um, very uh, a little bit of, of sweetness, but not too dominant. Okay. So it underlines the, the spirit and actually gives another aroma to coffee. Because I think on, on second thought is that the, the coffee aroma and cucumbers of so freshness and caramel and chocolate and a little bit uh, brownie kind of uh, fix very good together. Okay? Um, and just to make you, or to just give you an impression of how we taste the cold coffee for when we really first thought about the ideas okay. of recipes and mixing it with cucumbers and having different flavors and different tonics, different alcoholics, like everything we tried so much. It was a tough job, but we did it. Yeah. So, and that's why we want to give you a trace. Uh, and our nice colleague Felina is coming in. So everybody who wants to try the pure product has now the chance. And based on this product, we created the drinks Ben Aldo is talking yeah. about now. So, so. parallel parallel I will actually um, also give a few samples of the, the finished combination this one is just the, the pure um, cold brew and this one is going to be the, the result combining the spirit with the cold brew and the cucumber so different techniques you can use here it's classical because we are here on stage I don't have too much um, space so you can stir it or actually shake you can also use a blender so things actually every housewife should have uh, in, in, their, in their household or every houseman so I'll just give a few and then pass it to my colleague Felina she's gonna pass it around and please um, feel free to give us feedback maybe you're still have the, the feeling that it doesn't fit I think it's it's a different way of uh, drinking coffee So, 
two more. I apologize, we don't have enough of these, but so. And in case any of you has a question, just let us know, because then we can instantly answer everything you want to know. There you go. So after this presentation, actually, uh, feel free to visit us at our booth. It's just across the, the stage here. Um, there you can actually try, uh, the name of this drink is uh, a, a cafe and, and tonic, which is based on a gin tonic. As I said, it's a herbal infused cucumber um, cold brew. Enjoy. So now you can try some uh, very nice cold brew in combination with cucumber taste and different flavors. Hope you like it. And I guess we go to the next point that we wanted to show you today. Correct? Correct, let's do it. So the next point is the nitro cold brew. Just to give you some more backgrounds on the differentiation between the products, I guess Paul is a lot better than me, so I will hand it over. Okay, nitro cold brew, what we have here. We have the normal cold brew, and in the normal way, we add nitrogen. Yes, the name say it. The texture of the coffee is changing. The taste is changing a bit. It, is, it feels different in the mouth. And um, I hope it will get a bit faster that we can have a tr uh, few, few portions to try it. But if you want to know more about this, theme and taste it in a big cup, you can come to us because we have it there. But we have there a new system. Yeah, we don't add nitrogen, we add air. Yes, it is the same, it is a plug and play system, but the taste is the same and the texture of the coffee is the same because we don't add nitrogen there. So, this is a new product what we can see I hope what we can see in the bars in the next time so and I guess Nitro just stepped up within the last time because it became more and more important especially in countries like Australia and the United States so there were also created a lot of new recipes around the product Nitro itself so also here it usually doesn't stay the pure product but so many people with new ideas start thinking about how to create flavors or how to ex enhance with flavors so that the product itself becomes even more interesting. So, Bernardo, do you see Nitro already in the bar scene? Um, yes, because uh, you're right. It is, uh, plays a big role in, in the States, so I was there. And, of course, uh, some of my um, colleagues, U.S. colleagues, uh, used it as a different way of, um, let's say, use a traditional um, espresso martini, which is uh, a hot, usually a hot double espresso, you, so you can actually use the, the nitro coffee or nitrogen coffee. Um, as I said, the, the texture is, is brilliant. It's, it's very uh, foamy, slushy, kind of. Uh, the taste is, is quite new. and. Um, what, what we are actually discussing here, it's like, it's, 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 it's a journey which is a circle. It started with premiumization, actually it's about product presentation. Um, for me, as a consumer also, I'm, I'm not only uh, somebody who actually creates stuff and sells it. I mean, we are all here to uh, make money or to uh, make profit, is to find new ways. Um, um, new, new ways also for the, for the consumer, also for the customer, to, to give somebody an idea or actually to get somebody nosy, what is, what is he doing? Um, the, 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 the base, the coffee is still, it's, it's old school actually. Nitrogen is just a new, new uh, way of presenting. And uh, what is nowadays different is that people actually, as a bartender, what is important, are willing to pay a lot of money for quality which I think 20, 30 years back, 
as Diana mentioned, a coffee, one euro or one Deutsche Mark. Nowadays, you can buy a good cup of coffee for 10 euros. And people are willing to pay. So there we go. As I said, it's a circle. It's about premium, premiumization, focus on quality, focus on presentation. So talking about Nitro, which is now coming in for you from Feline to try. Um, this is what we have freshly from the tap on our stand right across uh, the walkway yeah. here. So if you're interested yeah. and also need more information on that issue because you're interested in Nitro itself, please feel free to come over to our booth later on. Yeah. Um, here you see the, the pure Nitro coffee. Um, we actually went one step further. Uh, I combined uh, the Nitro coffee with a, a technique which actually comes from the kitchen. Everybody heard of sous vide, sous vide cooking, which actually means um, um, putting or not losing aroma in, in uh, mainly food or also liquids by cooking low leverage or low temperature. So the combination nitro uh, sous vide style, um, and I used a, an, an old uh, spirit or actually liqueur, which is a Slivovitz, which is a little bit also kind of the image quite, quite dusty. Um, combination with uh, Greek yogurt, so if you have time, um, visit us later on um, and give me your feedback. So, the next part. Yeah. So, okay, let me introduce the ne next and the last part, what we present here, mixology and coffee. It's again a theme for Bernardo. And now you can see the link between coffee, the bar again, and premiumization again. Yes, and I say all in one what we have yeah. now. So here, um, as we mentioned in the beginning, we have uh, different kinds of glassware. The, the, the filling is actually nearly, it's, or it can be always the same. As I said, the, the emotion by drinking a coffee from a regular uh, coffee cup is different than to drink it out of uh, a tin cup, maybe. Even though the, the liquid is, is the same. Also, uh, we can use uh, very uh, high-end uh, martini-shaped glasses. Um, or uh, we can go further, maybe a little bit back, which are, um, I don't know the English word, in German you call a Weckglas, which is actually our grandmothers used to cook uh, jam or jelly in it, and then just store it and put it, put it uh, in the storage for months, years. And we have this uh, new kinds, not new, but actually old bottles. This is also a different way of presenting a drink. And, um, Going further is uh, we have all know about this problem, uh, paper or plastic cups, takeaway cups. This could also be a solution. Why don't you bring your, your bottle or a VEC glass with a, with a actually open and close it and you can still take it with you and use it two times, 20 times, 200 times just to reduce uh, garbage, okay? So here, um, this is a, a drink which we actually created in the, in the training center in Frankfurt. It's called Lavazza Yacht Club. Uh, the maritime uh, topic, that's why the bottle also. It's a combination, very light uh, drink with Falernum. Falernum is a very old liqueur uh, out of the Caribbean, combined Caribbean coffee flavors with uh, fresh pineapple, uh, lime and sugar. As I said, we have two ways of uh, presenting this drink. One is actually going to look like this. So this is usually I shake it and insert it into a bottle. It's very simple. You can also store it in the, in the back bar. And the finished drink actually looks like this. Simple as that. You can drink it all or just close the bottle and take it and use it for later or put it in the fridge. So, the same drink. Topic premiumization. Could also be in here. And this is the drink actually you can also see in our folder. Let me get rid of this.
So we have these very old crystal glasses, which I love, and you can also see more and more bars using them. Okay, and also for you, I think I'm sure everybody knows, a sign of a very, really fresh drink is mostly that you have the foam, the same with the crema of an espresso, a good coffee. If there's no crema, usually don't drink it. Okay? Same drink, different wrapping, actually, yeah. Presentation. Okay, just to give you some ideas, try to combine the styles, fashion, and uh, yeah, very simple. Okay, I think now we Any, use... Anybody has some, some questions or didn't you understand anything, sir? You want to try? The, the, the microphone. Huh? Ah. Well, congratulations for the, for the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, I was just, uh, if I need to make a, a kind of summary about uh, traditional filter coffee, nitro coffee and cold brew coffee, it's, uh, I have tried both. It uh, tastes a little bit different. Uh, to the eye, it looks completely different. Um, if we need to make a summary, um, which could be the, uh, the different senses that you will highlight in each type of coffee? Well, thanks for the question, first of all. Um, for a summary, the product itself that we've shown now in different varieties, it talks to all senses. I mean, you've you felt on your tongue the smoothness of the nitro. You've also felt the refreshing taste of the cold brew. And if you go on, we have like more drinks that you can try and experience. It's not just the perception that you have in a glass with a fresh product and the foam and the eye that is definitely one of the most important senses that is gonna be touched. It goes from the eye, over your mouth, and into your memory. So whatever your memory now is when you, when you see a nitro advertisement or you see a product on a menu, you always have that flavor and the exact moment you f tasted it first in your mind. So that's what we're trying. We're trying to create an idea and a flavor that sticks into your mind. So. More questions? Nitro cold brew also about different questions about coffee itself. Yeah. You try. Hi, my question is more about kind of coffee cocktails. Um, the espresso martini is just booming at the moment. It's huge. Do you think that it's kind of like a a problem in terms of overshadowing uh, kind of other coffee cocktails and no. maybe the creativity? No. no. Um, as I said, a bit, um, 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 important um, information or important is us is the technique. As a good chef or a bartender, mixologist, whatever, you need to know what you're doing. And uh, when I started a uh, little bit older semester now, there was no internet. So we have this Bible of Charles Schumann, which, which is nowadays actually one of the godfathers of, of the bartenders. So at that time, I had to read a lot. And of course, to, to learn recipes. That's, that's how bartenders start. We have to l learn recipes. This is our, our base, our f foundation. Um, the espresso martini is one of a very old recipe, which is uh, well known all over the world. Everybody um, know about neo martinis, which is cosmopolitan uh, apple teenies, which are very famous uh, through television. But um, as I said, uh, Lavazza and me, we try to actually use this this foundation, so the classics tradition, and try to create new things out of it. But of course. 
if you as a consumer would like to order or to drink a, a, a classic cocktail, which is an espresso martini or a mojito or uh, whatever, a traditional Mai Tai or what, yeah? These are recipes, they, they exist in the early 1910s, 20s. And please don't change them because they, they are magic. And this is actually what, what makes our um, profession. It does. And trends usually bring us further because as Bernardo said, the classics always come back. It's not fashion, it's also yeah. drinks, it's yeah. food. I mean, if we yeah. talk about burgers a few years ago, or now about Peruvian food, or there's always a new trend coming up, pushing one product very far. But in the moment you have a trend like this, it makes you even reconsider the classic and make more out of it. So you really reconsider and push it to the next level. So from my point of view, we're always thankful for new trends because it makes us think about stuff we thought we know in a new way. Like the first time when Bernardo came to me and said, what about a coffee and tonic? And I'm a big gin and tonic fan. I was like, seriously? Um, and it tastes amazing. So you can always make something very special out of it if you put time and effort into it. And that's what we're trying every time, to find new ideas about it. So honestly, we're very thankful for trends because they also make us to move into new directions and give new input and new inspiration.